Hi class, Jolene here. Let's take a look at some previous student work for the CD packaging. Here's one uh, that's done very well. There's a couple little problems with it, which I'm going to show you, but for the most part, it's done very well. You've got the front, the back of the packaging, and then the actual CD. And here you can see these are all the files that this student submitted. The illustrator file, um, there should be a uh, the illustrator file with the template and all the pieces on it. There should be a brainstorm file from Illustrator that's got your ideas and your type trials and then um, different pieces of art that you used in one way or the other to create your final um, collage uh, mashup of pictures like you did with the surreal project, etc. So let's go back and take a look at this. This is the front. So you've got the, the, in this case he did a movie, but you should be doing a music CD. Unless you get, uh, if you want to do something else, um, send me a note and ask me if it's okay and we can discuss it. You got type on this piece and then this is the CD. The problem with this is that you're required to have your songs on the CD for this project. I know there's plenty of CDs that do not include the songs, but I need you to do that because I need you to make sure that you know how to um, type on a path or type use the area type tool, whichever method you choose for this piece of it. So make sure that you that you do that on yours. You'll be graded for that. Here's another one. Here's the front and the inside with the list of songs and then the actual CD. So because this had to do with a brain, this student created a path with the pen tool. You'll see it here if I click on this you can see that the path and then typed the songs on that path. So now when we take another look at this, you can see how that came out. Oops, let me go back up there. So this definitely fulfills the requirement to use type on a path or an area or the area type tool for the CD. The only problem with this is if I turn the template back on. Okay, I've got the template back on. You'll see there's a couple of problems here. Remember that you should not put anything important in this space right here that's on the other side of this dash line. So you can see that there's songs here. And then the artwork should extend to this center blue line. So the artwork should extend there, but you in this area right here, the, you want to keep text out of this area. So if you were going to do something like this, you would need to adjust this, this part to make sure that it fits in there properly without um, getting into this area and making sure there's no type in this area, but that the artwork goes into that area. So those are some technicalities that you'll need to pay attention to. Let's see, we looked at that one. And now here's another one. Let's take a, let's, let's look at this close up um, and then take a look at how it was built. So there's the front. Notice that she uses a, <clears throat> two different fonts. Uh, one for the name of the uh, musician, the singer, and one the name of the album or the CD, not quite Lily. This is the inside, very simple. We've got a flush left um, setup of the songs over here. And then on the inside, she used type on a path for the songs. Notice how all the, the type, the coloring, the palette all 
matches. So if you saw all these pieces in different places, you would realize that they go together. It maintains the branding. Let's take a look at how she, the pieces that she used. So here's just a, a background that you probably found on the internet. A picture of a person, this old fashioned little telephone, a picture with somebody with a sack on their head, and this little dresser, this little piece of furniture. So then you can see how all these pieces there's that dresser, there's that phone, there's that person with the dress, there's that paper bag, and then the eyes and mouth kind of drawn in, and all that was created in Photoshop. And um, where she likely used adjustment layers to make everything have the, the so that the color palette would match. Because see, this started off as, a, as an orange dress. The dresser was green, and now it's this kind of dusty blue color. All right, let's take a look at another one. This is one, um, a, a tribute to our fallen heroes. Um, so you can see this type has for the, for the logo, for the name of the album has been modified. That's part of one of the, of the requirements. The songs are here. The reason that the, this, the songs look the way they do is because this student forgot to create outlines on the type. So that's what I see when, um, when you haven't outlined your type. Let's take a look at what this student intended for it to be. This is a little bit hard to see, but that's the way this student intended for this to look. Now we'll go over and take a look at the CD. So you can see he used type on a path for the songs here added the type that matches the type on the front. So we have cohesiveness there. The only problem I see with this is the color palette. These two color palettes match really very nicely. But over here we get to red, white, and blue. And I know that's a patriotic thing, but it doesn't really match these others. So keep that in mind when you're working on your project. Here's one um, of children's songs. You can see a bunch of uh, where a bunch of different pieces came together for this, and then um, maintaining that same background here. Now, these this type's a little bit difficult to read because of lack of contrast. So this might be a time when um, you want to take down the transparency on this layer. So I've clicked on that layer. We can hear, see here that the opacity is already pretty low at 19%. But if we take it down a little bit more, you can see that this is a little easier to read. And it looks like these circles are on a different layer. And so maybe that layer, need, the transparency needs to go down a little bit more on that too. And then this is the CD. Notice that the songs aren't on here. You should have the songs on yours. Now I can see that this student did know how to type on a path because this was, well, no, it wasn't typed on a path. I think it was just bent in some way. But just make sure that yours includes type on a path or the area type tool. All right, now take, let's take a look at a few more. This is some really fun artwork and type. That's all working really well. We see co uh, consistency in the design all the way across. Um, this is really fun the way this was done. It's just using this small piece here for the background so we know that it works. Only problem with this one is no songs on the CD. So you gotta make sure you have songs on the CD as well as on the back part here. Here's another one beautifully done, but here's an example of a problem with this type here. 
it's on the other side of the cut line. So this, let's see if I can move this, just needs to be moved at least down to inside that blue safety line. So I just want to make sure of that. That circle doesn't belong there. And the rest of that's looking pretty good. Interesting way to do the songs here. And here's another one that's really fun. So this is a, a collage match mashup like you did for your surrealism project. Let's take a look at all the pieces that went into this. So lots of different pieces. And by the way, if you're going to use a barcode or a parental advisory um, message, make these in Photoshop. Don't get it off the internet. This is, you all know how to make this now. It's just type and blocks of color, and that's just strokes and numbers. You know how to do that. It's much better to use a vector graphic for that. <clears throat> so you can see here background pieces that were used, other images, the donut. Now let's go back and take a look at how that was all put together. And there's the uh, back piece. And then again, we have nice consistency here. Problem with this one is no songs on the CD. It would have been very easy to put them in a circle, type on a path circle there. All right, we looked at that one. Problem with this one is this student didn't outline their type. So I can't see what this actually should look like. I should look, I can see it in bridge. Let's see, this is this one. So that's what it was intended to look like. But if it went to the printer this way, it would look like, let me get back to Illustrator, it would look, it would print like that, which ruins the whole design. There's the, the back part done really well. We have the consistency there and then just the brain used for the back part. It's missing the circle here, and it's missing the type with the songs on it. Other than that, it's done really well. So this put, student who put a lot of work into this would lose points for not creating outlines there and for not putting songs on the actual CD. Here's another one that I wanted to bring to your attention because the type is kind of hard to read. I know that the student was working with the black and blue theme, and that's why they wanted um, the type done this way. But when you're putting type across more than one color or a gradation of color, it can sometimes cause a problem because right here it looks really good where it's on a red hair. But over here, it does not look so good. So a, a, a solution might be to make the type smaller and just put it right here or just put it on the hair or, or something where you have consistent color. Same thing here, this type's a little bit difficult to read. Um, that's the one we already looked at. Let me close that one. And then the reason I want to show you this one, because this is an example of the student not placing their Photoshop file in the correct place. So this should be up in this corner. And if it was created properly in Photoshop, it would have fit perfectly here. So it's not going to work for me to try to fix it here. It needs to be done properly in Photoshop. Same thing happened here. You need to go all the way out to this farthest line. This is a kind of interesting way to do the, the songs using those fence posts in between the songs. Um, 
that fence post symbol is found on the backwards slash key on your keyboard. Again, we have consistency here, but no songs. So remember, make sure you have songs on the back and on the CD.